Born and brought up here, wasn't it? Born and brought up here, went to school here, went to university here. I don't believe in this theory that your background is a reason that people should vote for you. I do think it informs people about who you are, your values, the relationships you've had, um, you know, what's impacted you in your life. Well, I often say that my politics and the driving force when I was growing up was always my mum. Because she's always been very values driven. It always told us a point of challenge that you never give up, you never walk away. You stay, you fight, you fight for what you believe in. I know that's similar for you. My dad was a tool maker, worked in a factory all his life. Mm. My mum was a nurse. My mum and dad believed all their life that things would be better for their children. Yep. Their children had better opportunities, would be able to get on in life. And to some extent, they saw it. I went off to university, um, became a lawyer, led the Crown Prosecution Service, now lead the Labour Party. So for them, that was sort of living out of what they truly believed in. I don't think that even if families, parents now want that for their children, I don't think they truly believe. That hope in many ways has been taken away from them. Yeah. Far too many children, young people are still held back. Their future is more likely to be determined by the earnings or income of their parents than their own talents. Mm. That is intolerable. So we've got to smash that class ceiling, break that pernicious link between where people start in life and where they end up. Glasgow, Scotland, this is this is you, this is your heart. And as you go forward, you, you must hold within you a sense of hope and vision of what you want to see Scotland be, what it can be. Oh, massively, and I suppose my biggest frustration is that Scotland has always been a country that's looked outwards, not inwards. It's always yeah, yeah. a country that's punched well above its weight, being an internationalist country. And we've got to move past seeking conflict with other parts of the UK and instead unleash that huge potential. The job opportunities, the trade opportunities, the tourism opportunities are huge. But what it lacks is a coordinated and thought through strategic growth plan. Yeah. And that's what the opportunity is, not just with, of course, the opportunity with an incoming UK Labour government, we hope across the UK, but actually partnership and cooperation with Scotland. And there's that feeling and mood of, for change and people wanting to get away from this managed decline, get away from this constant crisis after crisis. Yeah. And that change now on offer, not just in Scotland, but across the UK as a Labour Party. And I think, Almost everyone knows. Firstly, they do want to know you understand what they're going through and you've got, you're going to you know, be able to help them get an appointment with a GP, mm. get an operation, not be on a waiting list, you know, sort their energy bills out. But they also know you've got to fix the fundamentals. Mm. And so it's that combination. I hope that in generations to come, we can look back and say we made a material um, improvement and change and difference yes. um, across the whole of Britain. This could only be done in partnership. And I firmly believe that the best decisions are made by people with skin in the game, as mm. close to people as possible. Mm. And that's why you know, an incoming Labour government needs to be bold about you know, making sure power, resource, decision making is closer to people. A different way of working in you know, that true spirit of cooperation that devolution was always intended to be. Yeah, so it's not just a division that means two governments fight with each other and fail Scotland, but instead cooperate, work together and deliver for Scotland. With a stronger Scotland in a better Britain. That's what we get with the Labour government.